Hello and welcome to your next tutorial on Visual Basic and today we're going to be learning about collections. Now what are collections? Well they're kind of, they work very similarly to arrays and basically, basically what they allow you to do is to store multiple information or um, multiple variables that you set for individual objects kind of like what we kind of touched upon with properties last time which we'll be using again uh, in the, the same collection which will be uh, associated with our object that we'll be creating. And it'll make perfect sense. So in this little example, what I'm going to be doing is creating a, a little list box that will list uh, subscribers. Like maybe you have a bunch of subscribers and maybe they have to give you like y your their name, their address, and their phone number or something like that. So let's just uh, create a little list box here. I uh, haven't used this guy in a while. So list subscribers and that's about it and we're gonna have to make some buttons here I think this might be the last tutorial is it the last I think this would be the last one for the level one so add so this would be adding a subscriber because I think this is pretty much everything you guys probably need to know in an elementary visual basic course so as for a level two so this one will be called BTN read because we're gonna read the information that uh, of the person that would be selecting here because uh, whoops because um, there really isn't much else to do really other than and then we want to remove because the next kind of stuff will be working with like ASP.NET applications and databases and stuff like that and that's not really something that's in an elementary course but I will do a Visual Basic and a C Sharp uh, level two, which will have that kind of stuff in it, but uh, not not that's not one of my priorities yet because that's not usually uh, that's not a common thing people need. But I will I will do it because there's pretty much nothing about that on the internet, so I will definitely do that uh, down the road. Okay, uh, okay, so we want to be able to add some items here. So let's double click our add. Well, actually, first let's create our class that will uh, have our properties to set our different information, the variables. So we'll call it subscribers. Whoops. There we go. And let's create the variables that we want to set values to. So the first one was, whoops, there we go. Actually, just private. A name as string. Private address as string. And oh come on, I just can't spell today. Private phone as string. And now we're gonna make three properties that will fetch this information depending on who we're talking about. So we'll make, be making a uh, uh, a property here. Let's call it get name as string. And type out get and all we'll be doing is setting value so we'll be pretty much be sending in uh, wherever we type in the name and we'll want to set the name whoops, the name here equal to whatever we type in on the other in the other form so whatever we pass in here name will now be equal to that for that specific object and then we'll return that name and that's all then I'll copy this, paste, paste, so get address, return address, and address equals. And then this last one would be get phone, return phone, and phone right here. So save, go back here. Okay, so now in here, let's uh, throw in our little ad right here. So first of all, outside of our button, we'll want to create our new collection. So I will call it private, because we want it to be private. Subscribers, this is unrelated to the class name subscribers, as new collection. And that's all. So now we, so we created a new collect, uh, collection called subscribers. Then down here, uh, I'll create a new variable here, and let's call it subscriber. 
So we'll be creating a new subscriber every time we click the add button. And as new subscribers. Now this is unrelated to this. This is the name of that class subscribers we made here, just so you know. So these two can be different names. They don't have to be the same right there. And well, we're gonna have to set some values here. So subscriber dot whoops. Yeah, subscriber dot get Oh, why isn't this working? Oh, son. I, I didn't spell this stuff right. Oh, there we go. Dot get name will be equal to whatever we type in. So input box. Uh, and, whoops, enter your name. Name. And the default value, let's have it say type here. So I'll copy this. Copy. Paste, paste. Uh, so this would be get address, enter your address, uh, address, and then here will be phone, enter your phone, phone, whoops, number, there we go, so now we're going to be fetching in the three pieces of information for that individual subscriber that we're creating. Uh, and, and these uh, values would not be reset every time uh, because we'll be creating a new subscriber uh, within a new collection. So, or further down the collection, another index. We'll be creating indices every time we click this button, which will make sense in a, a little bit later. Then we'll want to actually add this to our collection. So our collection is called subscribers. Dot add. And then we'll want to add that, uh, whatever we typed in, so subscriber. There we go. And then we want to actually add something to our list. Subscribers. Dot items. Dot add. There we go. And then inside this, we want to type in the. We want the name of the person to show up. Just the name. We don't need the address or the phone number to pop up. Otherwise, what's the point in the read button? We just want the names to pop up here, not all the other information. So right here, we'll just type out subscriber dot get name so only the name will show up there when we click this so I click save uh, now let's work with the read so if I just oh I, I don't think I have enough time so let me just do all three buttons first and then uh, show you show you later so for the read we'll just create a variable called individual as subscribers and you'll see why I'm doing this in just a moment and we have to use the C type and right here, now the reason why we have to create a new uh, object here momentarily uh, with the subscribers is so we can uh, use it to refer to it when we are, when we pop up the little message box that shows up because we want to be able to refer to that specific index and, a, and this is the only way we can do it because we can't use different um, different data types uh, because option strict is on and you'll see what I mean in just a moment. So in the C type, what we'll be putting in uh, will be sub subscribers dot item and then the specific index so we're going to type in list subscribers dot selected index but um, indices with collections always start at one not zero as opposed to um, list boxes that start at zero so like if you click the very first name of the person at zero and it tries to search for the subscriber um, at zero, it doesn't exist, so you always have to add one to it. And the data type we want to convert this to is subscriber itself. Subscribers itself. Okay, so what it, it's doing is it's gonna set this equal to um, the specific item, that whichever subscriber that you're uh, selecting on your list box. And the only way it can retrieve the index, because inside the item goes the index number. And the only way you can get the, or the index number. And the only way you can get the index number is to find out the index number of the list box that you have highlighted. So it's a little complicated. And then further down, we want to actually show this. So message box dot show. And then in here, what should we type in? I don't know, um, name, and momentarily individual will be equal to only whatever we had highlighted in the list box. So in, so individual will have all the properties of only that one person. 
So dot get name plus I don't know semicolon address colon plus individual dot get address plus let's go down one here um, semicolon phone colon plus um, individual dot get whoops phone did I spell that right? I hope I did. So subscriber info will be in the corner of the box with message box dot okay here. And I want a little space to be right there. There we go. Uh, so this will print the three pieces of information for us. That's really, really nice. And the last thing we want to be able to do is actually remove things. So I'll hit the remove so we can remove things whenever we want. Uh, we don't want to remove the item from the list box first because when we want to remove um, that person's information from the specific collection index number uh, we won't be able to do that so we want to remove them from the collection first then remove the name from the list box so first we type out subscribers dot remove and then inside here goes the index number and we'll find out the index number by whatever the index number of that we have highlighted in the list box so dot selected index and then plus one again and then we'll remove it from the actual list box itself dot whoops dot items dot remove at and then the index number whoops that's a lot of stuff there index oh i don't have a list list subscribers dot selected index there we go so I click save and then I run this application if I add uh, let's throw Adam one two three fake street and what's my phone number one eight hundred one two three four five six seven there we go so there I am there uh, let's add in Mike three two one downward I spelled it wrong Boulevard, uh, and what's his phone number? I don't, I, I don't know. Five 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 Bungie, and let's add uh, one more person. Nicole, what's her two three one scrambled letters, and her phone number five 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 fake. I keep doing underscores because I keep the shift down. Okay, let's try reading this information. So if I read Adam, there I am. Now remember and all my three pieces of information are there. Remember, if I didn't put that plus one there, it would have been searching for number zero in my, uh, in, in the collection. And since collections always start with index number one instead of zero, I had to make sure that when it's looking for the index on my list box, which does start at zero, plus one. So if I go to Mike and read his, there's Mike's stuff. And then if I read Nicole's, I can also remove Mike there he goes. If I click this and read it, it's still Nicole's information. If I read this, it's still my information. If I add one more, let's go Tom, um, any town, city, and any number. I don't know. And then I can read Tom. So, any town, city, his phone is any numbers. And yeah, that's pretty much how that works. I have, what, a minute and a half? Okay, so let's see if I can uh, explain this. So, uh, so we created a collection, kind of like how we created a, uh, an object. Uh, so instead of this being an object, it's, called, it's our, the name of our collection. And then we created our object down here, the subscriber itself, each individual subscriber. So every time we click the Add button, we're creating a new object uh, associated with our subscriber's class. These two are not related, these two names. I know they're the same, but they're not. Then we get our three pieces of information, and then using our three properties, all we do is return the values to these three for that specific object. That's why they're not always the same. Then we actually add this subscriber after assigning all these values. So we add it into our collection. So now we'll be adding another element into our collection as well, each time as well. And we're just in, in our list, all we do is print the name. 
the name part of that one uh, collect collection member only. Then when we read it, um, I really don't have enough time. But uh, yeah, so that that's pretty much it. Um, I'm sorry for just cutting off there. Uh, I, I I hope that that pretty much makes enough uh, sense for you. But um, yeah, I don't have enough time and but. But this is pretty much it. I think this is the end of my level 1 series, so I hope this tutorial was helpful for you, and uh, I'll see you in the next language, or GUIs.